what's up and welcome back to another episode of keeping up with commanders i'm your host mason kennahan and let's just say this this week is not going to be a fun episode that is for sure the dallas cowboys have beat the washington commanders here in week 12 34 to 26 in a wild game the first half very dull second half a whole lot happened especially in that fourth quarter the Washington Commanders have lost their third straight game. They fall to 7-5 and five on the year. The Cowboys improve to 4-7. and seven. There are many thoughts I want to say about this game. We'll just jump right into the ending because I think that's where most people are going to be looking at. Um, 41 total points scored in the fourth quarter. 24 for Dallas, 17 for Washington. This game was 3-3 three to three at halftime. 3-2-3. Three, three. The game finished 34-26. to 26. The fourth quarter was insane. 24 points from Dallas, 17 from Washington. I mean, from Washington blowing the lead, the offense was dead the entire t- entire first three quarters. At the very end, some more like devil magic happening for Washington. Uh, the big pass to Terry McLaurin for the touchdown. I mean, the mix, the the, the roller coaster of emotions between the 86 yard touchdown pass from Jane to Terry. Terry has did nothing the entire game before that. Then gets 86 yards on that one big catch. And then Austin Seibert misses the extra point to tie the game. Um, It is frustrating watching this team right now. It really feels like we'll get more into the offense later. It just feels so hard. And like uh, Cliff Cliff is, it, it feels like Cliff is working so hard to just make this offense move much more so than, what was happening in the first five, six, seven weeks. It, it It's disappointing seeing this team fall to a team that they should have beaten my score prediction. If you watched the preview or listened to the preview episode last Friday with Cam Sanderson, my score prediction was Commanders 30, uh, Dallas 13. I mean, Dallas put up 34 points against this Washington Commanders team. Not all of it was against the Washington defense. You had the onside kick with two kickoffs in the final like five minutes for Dallas returned for touchdowns. Um, You had special teams mishaps everywhere for both sides. I I mean, I I guess the, the ending, I'm going to get to the ending here. You finish touchdown Dallas. You finish. Hold on. All right. (laughs) The ending touchdown, Dallas touchdown, Washington touchdown, Dallas field goal, Washington punt touchdown, touchdown interception. After the first half went blocked punt, field goal, missed field goal, missed field goal, fumble, punt, 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 pick, punt, punt, field goal. And then the second half, like everything happened. So it was a it was a roller coaster of emotions um from me. If you're on my if you're looking at my Twitter or X or whatever, I, I said, you know, I'm out. Then I, I was back in after the uh after um after what was it? The touch, the first touchdown to who was it, Zach Ertz, maybe? Let me find it. After the first touchdown to, um, yeah, to Zach Ertz, two point conversion attempt was good. I was back in. Then Kevontae Turpin goes 99 yards to the house, which, by the way, that spin move. Okay, look, I, I'm not only just a Commanders fan, right? I'm also a football fan. I love watching good football. Now, this game was bad. I think both teams should be relegated to the XFL after this one. But that move from Kavate Turpin was nasty. It was nasty. The spin move faked out the entire Washington special teams unit and was just, it was great. It was great. That's all I'll say about it. I won't give it too much time. But it was a great move from Kavante Turpin, a great play from him after muffing the kick. Um. And then Washington goes down right. It was right of uh, Dan Quinn to kick that field goal a little bit early. Um, then the one play touchdown to Terry McLaurin. Uh, then the onside kick missed the extra point for Seibert. The onside kick uh, then gets returned for a touchdown. And then on the last play, uh, the Hail Mary gets intercepted from Jane Daniels. So I guess we'll start here with, with, uh, the the first the the touchdown to Terry. We'll start with the touchdown to Terry. This entire game, right? This entire game, your special teams unit, if you're Washington, has been horrific, horrific. All right. Now I know Austin Seibert has been almost perfect the entire season, but today 
it wasn't his day. It wasn't his day. It was it wasn't his day. Right? He goes two of three, does not hit an extra point at all the entire day. All right. It was clearly not his day. Now, even before, um, even though Cyber was was having Austin Cyber was having a bad day. If I'm Dan Quinn, or if I'm just any head coach in the NFL, right? You go down and you score a touchdown. There's less than a minute left, or however much time there was, right? Um, I think there was only 30 seconds left or something. You score a touchdown. You have a two point conversion to win the game or to lose the game, or you go for the extra point. If I am a head coach, and I've made this very clear on my Twitter everywhere, if I'm a head coach in that scenario, I'm going for two points and putting putting the game on myself, whatever play I call, right? And my players, my offense that has been that has all the momentum. I'm putting it on on my team. Rather than having to rely on a coin toss, drive 70 yards down the field, score a touchdown, or kick a field goal, then have your defense hold, uh, like hold up and have a stand. So, I mean, like 99 out of 10 times, uh, not 99 out of 100 times, I am going for two in a scenario like that. And, I mean, they didn't. They didn't at the end of the day. Now, again, that's looking back at hindsight, but, I mean, that was my thoughts even before uh cyber missed the field goal or missed the extra point or whatever so that is my thoughts on um where things stand for uh for that decision because that decision was pretty poor from dan quinn he um doubled down on it of course in his interview uh in his po- post-game press conference uh austin eckler went down with the injury at the end as well, concussion, went to the hospital for precautionary reasons. Hopefully he's good, but I wouldn't expect him to play next week against Tennessee, that's for sure. Brian Robinson was injured for part of this game. Andrew Wiley was injured for part of this game. Tyler Biotish also was in a concussion protocol for a little bit. A lot of guys were hurt. So let's just jump right into the offense here because I, I want to talk about the struggles uh, well, I don't really want to talk about the struggles, but you guys know what I mean. We got to talk about the struggles for this offense. I have I made it clear, and I think everyone knew it was clear coming into this season. Week one through seven, Cliff was on a completely different tier than anyone else in the National Football League. But after that, his offenses collapse every time, every time. Now, he has never had, or he's never started off a season with as good of an offense as he had in weeks one through seven so far this season. He was by far, by far, in a way, the best offense in the league belonged to Cliff Kingsbury. Now, his offenses in the past in Arizona have always been in the top five, top 10, and then they've collapsed to bottom half of the league, but they've never been consistently number one throughout an entire first half of the season. Now, that's the thing with this this time. This time around, were things going to be different? Cliff clearly had the best offense in the league, and for the first time, I mean, he's always he's known for his good offenses, but for the first time um, in a while, he he has the best offense in the league. So what's going to happen? Um, they they've collapsed again. They have collapsed now. At the end of this game, the offense actually started to be good again. Um, Jane Daniels, 25 of 38, 275 yards, two touchdowns, two picks, four sacks, passer rating of an 82.7. But again, you take off 86 yards or 87 or however long, 86 yards uh, for that one play that Terry McLaurin at the end. And Jane Daniels finishes with less than 200 passing yards. Jane Daniels, with three minutes left in the third quarter, was 11 of 20 for 77 yards with three minutes left in the third quarter. I mean, you cannot have, at this stage in the season, you cannot have offenses just go dormant like that. You're not going to win games. There wasn't a single point in this entire game I thought Washington should win this game. Like, if they won, good, but they didn't deserve it. They have pl- they played horrible the entire time. Now, they they made it close. Um, Dallas, at the end, 24-point fourth quarter, just insane. All right, the defense kind of just gave up, plus, of course, the two kickoff return touchdowns. For Dallas as well. The special teams gave up. Um, it, it was bad. It was very bad. The run game averaged 5.8 yards per carry. Now, some of it goes on Jane Daniels and his scrambling ability. Jane, D- Daniels was the leading rusher for Washington. Seven carries for 74 yards and a touchdown. 
But beyond him, McNichols had three ca- three carries for 22. Eckler, nine carries for 22. Brian Robinson played early on, but then they missed him for pretty much the rest of the game. Five carries for 13 yards. Like, this run game was dead the entire the entire game. Nothing was getting out of this run game. The receiving game and the passing game. Terry McLaurin was, like, nowhere to be seen until that fourth quarter. He had five catches, 102 yards, and a touchdown. 86 of those 102 yards came on the big play. So he had four catches for 16 yards, if I'm doing math correctly there, which I think I am. Four catches for 16 yards going into, like, that final drive. That is embarrassing. Terry McLaurin, your number one receiver, should never have le- like less than 20 yards with under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter or just in heading into the fourth quarter in general you're not going to win games like that noah brown six catches for 71 yards zach Ertz, six catches for 38 and a touchdown diami had two for 22 bates robinson zacchaeus mccaffrey eckler all had catches as well john bates by the way that was uh not not so good stuff from him today that is for sure but um yeah, it was rough. It was very rough for this team today. Um, the fumble for Bates, of course. Two picks. I mean, this offense turned it over three times today. Three times. They turned it over five times total. Total. This entire season. And they turned it over five times today. Let me get that. Let me make sure I'm actually... I'm pretty sure I am. But yeah, this. I mean, this offense has been great in giveaways so far this season. Oh yeah, only five turnovers. This entire season, and Dallas's defense, led by Mike Zimmer, made them turn it over three times. It was embarrassing. That's the word I kept on using throughout the entire game, embarrassing. The Dallas Cowboys, your arch rival, winning this game in, in a game that you should have won. Now you fall to 7-5. and five. This offense has been on a massive decline. Let me Let me pull up. I don't know if the stats will be updated yet, so it may not be, but... Let me pull up where this offense says in terms of efficiency, like since week eight. Hold on. This entire season, they're second. I don't think it's updated yet. Since week eight, this offense is 16th. I don't know if that's updated, so I'm actually going to scratch that. But since week eight, I mean, if it counts week 12 or not, if if it counts week 12, it's going to be worse. But since week eight, 16th after being number one since in the first seven weeks, this team, this offense is collapsing. It is on a collapse right now. Um, Will Cliff be able to rebound? That's the big question. Because if he doesn't, I don't know if he's going to be back next year. I don't know. I mean, he has one job, and that that is to have a consistent offense for his young quarterback. And if if these offenses keep on collapsing in the second half of the season, he's got to go, just like in Arizona. So I'm not calling for his head yet. I'm not. I'm not saying he should get fired or anything, but he has to turn this around. He cannot have these performances like this throughout the final five games of the season, because if he does, he should get fired. But again, he has time to turn it around. We'll see what happens there. Um, this offense wasn't. A, it was a joke. It was a joke. The entire the entire game. Twenty six points. I I don't care. Um, it was bad. It was very bad. Um, I mean, Dallas's defense, three turnovers, four sacks on Jane Daniels. Daniels is running for his life out there, seven carries for 74 yards. I mean, yeah. One bright thing I will say. One bright thing I will point out for this offense, um, uh, for this offense today, Brandon Coleman. Let me Let me make sure it's still there because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Brandon Coleman, 45 pass blocking snaps, zero pressures allowed, a 90.9 pass block grade. That is unofficial as I'm recording this, as is, of course the PFF grades will be finalized Monday morning. But they're when they did they, they now do like live PFF grading, and it's most of the time like around the around area that's right. A 90.9 pass block grade, no pressures allowed in 45 pass blocking snaps for Brandon Coleman. You can say the same for Tyler Biotis, too. 45 pass blocking snaps, no pressures allowed. Only four pressures on Jane Daniels. So this offensive line did a good job for the most part. Um, 
was it just Jane Daniels running in the pressure? I'll have to watch back, watch it back. But I mean, I guess that was good. Now the run block was just treacherous. It was bad. Like the run game never got going, but pass block wise, I think it was pretty solid. Moving, switching sides to the ball, switching sides of the ball, whatever it is, to the defense. Cooper Rush today, 24 of 32, 247 yards, two touchdowns, and a pass rating of 117.6. That's right. Cooper Rush, we made Cooper Rush look like, I mean, Patrick Mahomes is probably a bad comparison, but like a Jared Goff in a dome. All right, that's what Cooper Rush looked like, Jared Goff in a dome. So, I mean, it was it was very good uh, performance from Rush. I got to give props to Mike McCarthy and that offense play calling today. Um, just Joe Witt's defense did not have it at all. The Dallas run game only ran for 91 yards, averaged 3.3 yards per carry. It was bad for the Dallas run game. Pretty run dimensional. Um, but at the end of the day, the defense did a fairly good job. It was just mistakes on Washington's side and miscues that are Washington's fault that was the reason why they lost this game. Because, I mean, like as, as good as this Dallas offense was, you take away those two like kickoff return touchdowns and Washington wins this game. So, um, yeah. That's what I got to say about that. But uh, the defense overall leading tackler, Bobby Wagner, great game from him. Eight tackles, highest graded player on PFF. Frankie Louvu, eight tackles. Both of them had a tackle for loss. Quad Martin had seven tackles and a fumble recovery, I'm pretty sure, as well, I want to say. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe. No. Quad Martin, I think, forced to fumble, probably. He's probably forced to fumble. Um or, or he, he blocked the kick. He blocked the field goal for Washington. So, um, yeah, uh, not a great day for Benjamin St. Juice as well. Mike Sanders still was kind of getting cooked out there a little bit. Noeg Benogany wasn't having fun. Um, a lot of guys in that secondary really struggled. The the emphasis, though, I want to put on this defense, I, I tweeted about it before this game. We needed pressure on Cooper Rush. You're going up against two rookie offensive lineman the cowboys did not have zach martin as well they were without zach martin two rookie offensive linemen you have to get pressure on cooper rush i mean one sack one sack on cooper rush on a guy who's not that mobile like if you get him in the pocket he's not you're like he's not going to get away from you um it's it's embarrassing uh this defense could not get any pressure at all throughout the entire game it was uh, unfortunate to watch, but um, yeah, yeah, six tackles for loss, one sack. They were getting in the backfield in the run game, but you got to get to Cooper Rush in the pass because I guess I mean we didn't know this, but he just killed the secondary. So that's that's what I got. I mean, it, it was embarrassing, and the defense was embarrassing. Um, now, but be- it was better than the offense, that's for sure, but still not fun at all. I'm just going to put this last segment in the final thoughts and takeaways. But the special teams unit, guys, hello. The special teams unit was horrible, horrible. Larry Izzo, I was praising him earlier. And like early on in the game, I was praising him because he had the blocked field goal, first blocked field goal for the Washington Commanders. And I don't know how many years. I can't remember the last time Washington blocked a field goal. So I was like, yeah, let's go. Then Washington marches down the field and they kick a field goal. Awesome. But then they Cybert misses from Cybert missed from 51, right? It was it hooked pretty badly. That one was kind of on him. But then where it really came to fruition was the what is the fun, like the end of the the end of the game. You cannot let Cavante Turpin. I know he's the best punt returner, you kick returner in in the league. Really, but you cannot. He muffed the kick. He muffed the kick. There should be no reason why he is able to put one move on the entire defense and run the rest of the way for the touchdown. That was a dagger. Now, Jane comes back at him and scores a touchdown in one play after a, a field goal drive as well. But then again, I mean, the, the last onside kick is whatever, like that second one was whatever, but the missed. Two missed extra points, a missed field goal, and two kickoff return touchdowns. 
for the for the Dallas Cowboys. That is atrocious. Atrocious from Larry Izzo and that special teams unit. Now, Izzo and that special teams unit has been great so far this season. So, I mean, they lost them this game, that's for sure. And I'm going to blame the loss on them, for sure. As well as the many other things like Kingsbury and some other people. But don't be calling for Larry Izzo's head, right? Don't be calling for his firing because they lost him this game. Now, if the struggles continue moving on, yeah, for sure. But the special teams unit has been great so far this season. Um, this game was tough. I don't know if Seibert's injury would played a part in it. He's coming back from, I believe, a hip or a hamstring injury. Uh, first game back for him. I don't know if that played a part in all of his misses. But Zane Gonzalez didn't miss anything, and he came off, off the couch, right? Zane Gonzalez came from off the couch, and he knocked down all of his kicks last week in the last couple of weeks for Washington. And now Seibert, who's been great all season, 26 of 28 going into this game for field goals. And he misses one field goal, misses two extra points. It was bad. It was very, very bad from Austin Seibert. Other final thoughts and takeaways. This offense is collapsing all right but there's still time to turn this thing around right there's still time to turn this thing around five games six weeks in those for those five games all of them are on the weekend no short weeks you get the full bye week as well in a couple of games after the titans game next week there is still time to turn this around plus no matter what happens washington is at least going to be a full game up on whoever is the eighth seed in the nfc the Commanders have built themselves a good cushion early on in the season. I mean, they were 7-2 and two at one point, right? Um, where they just need to win three of these final five games, and they are in the playoffs. All right, they still have the seventh seed. They go up against the Titans next week, who actually looked good today. They beat the Texans, so that will be tough. They play the Saints after the bye week. The Eagles, the Falcons, and the Cowboys. They need to win three of those five. They need to win three of those five, and I have, I'm confident in them that they will make the playoffs. Now, the Titans will be hard. The Saints, maybe. The Eagles, that's going to be a crucial one. Falcons, maybe. Cowboys, maybe. I am not certain any of these games Washington can win, but I think they can win all of them. Or, like, they have a legit shot at winning all of them. So that is what's ahead for the Washington Commanders. It was a very rough game today, 34 to 26, the final score for Dallas. Um, other final thoughts, that call from Joe Davis, lightning strikes tr strikes twice in Washington, was elite. An elite call, I cannot enjoy that because of how the game ended. I want to enjoy that call from Joe Davis so bad, but I cannot because Austin Cyber missed the extra point. So that, that that is it. That'll probably wrap things up here. The next pod, we will not have a preview pod next week. I'm going to take off for Thanksgiving. So next pod will be after the Titans game next Wednesday. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at Mason underscore Kennahan. If you want to follow me on Blue Sky, I should probably add the Blue Sky logo up there somewhere. If you're watching the YouTube version, I should probably add it on the graphic. But um, if you want to follow me on Blue Sky, at Mason Kennahan as well. Same same tag on both of them. So that is... um. That will do it. It was a very depressing loss. Commanders fans are up in arms. We've got booze at the stadium. Um, the best football we saw today from a Washington team was probably from Major Tutty during the halftime game against the Pee Wee football team. That is the only thing I'm excited for right now is seeing those highlights from Major Tutty and Blooper. But I'm just rambling. All right, that, that's it. That's it for this week's episode of Keeping with Commanders. Next pod will be after the Titans game next monday not not today but next monday that'll be it for this week's episode of keeping up with the commander see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>